Welcome back. Time now is 6.30 on your Sunday. Let's get right back over to Hannah Gard with a look at your weather authority forecast and the heat ramping back up today. Yeah, unfortunately, we're looking at another hot day. Yesterday, we hit 93 degrees. Today, I think we could even be a little bit warmer. Now, it's going to depend on some high cloud cover out there. But tomorrow, too, I think we still keep that heat around. So both days, if we hit 94, that'll touch our record high, both set in 2016. Now, it's not going to last long. By Tuesday, we'll see those temperatures tapering off, and we won't be near those records. But we're supposed to be in the 80s. So right now, what's going on that's going to give us that heat? We do have a couple of showers. So we still have some moisture in the area, but you can see these upper level clouds that are across the area. That's going to help with the heat and maybe lower our highs, but I don't think we'll have enough of that to keep us from getting into the mid 90s in some places. So here's this storm complex that's sitting over just north of Louisiana right now in Arkansas, causing some severe weather. That is going to help to drop those temperatures Tuesday, so we'll get some rain chances and maybe some nicer conditions. The broad scheme of things, we have a lot going on. We have this low up across the northern plains, then we have this little tail of it. It's kind of associated with that low. We have the remnants of Ophelia on the northeast, so all of that low pressure is helping to what we call amplify or strengthen a ridge of high pressure that's over Texas. You can see this clockwise motion here. It's pretty dry over Texas and parts of Mexico. That's that high pressure. So when you have very strong lows, it makes that high a little stronger as well, which is why I think that we can push those temperatures so far above normal because we are still in that higher pressure. We're not in the low pressure yet. So I think even through tomorrow, we still see that high until we get to Tuesday. Then that low comes through. We'll see a cold front. It's not going to make it cold, but once we get low pressure over us, it'll drop those temperatures to be a bit more seasonable. So that front comes through tomorrow. It'll be in the late afternoon, early evening. And it will bring a storm chance. We'll back that heat off a bit into the end of the week and see some 80. So right now that storm complex and associated cold front is over Oklahoma and Texas. And we still have this little boundary left over that's been there for about two days now that's helping to pop up some of the coastal showers and storms that we're seeing. We also still have a big upper level low that's just to our southeast causing some shower activity. So that could help give us some lift today to see a couple of storms like we saw yesterday, very isolated in nature. But because it's so hot and we have that moisture, we still could see some good rumblers. Maybe we'll have to watch for some gusty winds and small hail. So possible this afternoon, but still very isolated. Tomorrow, the cold front comes down. That'll give us enough lift to see more widespread storm coverage for Monday. Now, this is in the early late afternoon that we start to see those pop up so before that especially with this front coming down we get what's called prefrontal heating i think it could still get pretty hot until we see these storms pop and then we'll see cloud cover some lingering storm activity and then it clears out for the evening tuesday this boundary once it moves through will kind of sit offshore so we still have a chance to see maybe a couple of showers but it's going to be a much lower rain chance we'll see most of that rainfall offshore as that boundary stalls out but now rain potential giving us a chance maybe on the north shore and the coastal areas to see an inch or more of rainfall and that would be good news for that drought conditions if we can get some meaningful rain so monday's our best chance of getting storms but i think some coastal showers and storms wednesday thursday could also spread inland now the not so great news in the long term once that low moves out we start to see high pressure rebuilding so even into the start of next month, we're going to be pretty warm across the entire central part of the U.S. We're looking at above average temperatures. And this time of year, we're supposed to be in the mid 80s. So it is still going to be pretty warm compared to where we're supposed to be as we headed into fall yesterday. Now, quickly looking at the tropics, Ophelia is now a remnant low and we do have Philippe out in the central Atlantic. That is going to be a fish storm and not looking like it's going to strengthen to a hurricane and a wave following that. But once again, everything's just been going out to sea, which is what we like to see this time of year. For us, I think Thursday we might see those temperatures drop near the mid 80s, which is where we're supposed to be. But we're still going to be, I think, a bit above normal as that high is so strong down to the west of us. 
But once we get that to move out, we need a cold front is yeah. what we need, a real cold front to finally drop those temperatures this down. This has just been a weird year for us where we are not getting any storms. We have this weird drought. At this point, most years, we're getting too much rain or too many storms uh, heading in our direction. This is... Um, a little bit different for us. Yeah, and the drought is not good heading into October because that's typically our driest month of the year. So we want to try to get as much rain as we can as we head into the next month. All right. Thank you very much there, Hannah. Six